Every year on the fifth Sunday of Great Lent, the Orthodox Church remembers the life of Saint Mary of Egypt. Today, we're going to hear her story. The life of the fourth century Saint Mary of Egypt is powerful, moving, and extreme. This isn't a story of just a nice person. This is a story of a journey from the depths of depravity to the heights of holiness, a journey from darkness to light. It is like an ultimate expression of great Lent. The story is actually passed down to us by another saint, Saint Zosimus. Zosimus was a monk. Zosimus lived in a small monastery at the edge of the desert, and this monastery had an annual custom that during great Lent, the monks would leave in the first week and spend time alone in the desert in time of prayer and fasting. Living on a few supplies and prayers, he journeyed through the desert for 20 days without seeing a single soul. And then on the 20th day, he met someone here in the desert where no one should be able to live. He found an old woman with hair that was bright white and skin that had been darkened almost black by the heat of the sun. Zosimus caught up with her and before he could even ask her her name, before he said anything, she knew who he was and referred to him as Father Zosimus. She knew his name, she knew his priestly title, and Zosimus felt in his heart with both that example and something in his spirit that said this was a person with true spiritual presence. Zosimus then asked her to pray for him. She didn't want to and he insisted, please mother pray for me. So she began to pray, so quietly that he couldn't hear the words of her prayer. But as she prayed, he watched as she lifted an entire foot off the ground and Zosimus was terrified. He thought in his mind, is this a demon? She finished her prayer, stepped onto the ground, made the sign of the cross and smiled, hearing his thought and said, no, I am no demon. I am just a sinful woman. And Zosimus asked her for her story and she began to tell it to him. As a young woman, a teenager in fact, this lady, Mary of Egypt as we now know her, left her home, her family, and everything she knew for the big city. She went to Alexandria, and there she lived in a life of unbridled sexual immorality. She gave into every lust that she had. She wasn't a prostitute, she purely went after the sin. She ensnared young men and seduced them purely for the pleasure of doing so. And she lived in this way of utter debauchery for 17 years of her life. Then one day, she encountered a group of pilgrims traveling from the city of Alexandria in North Egypt to Jerusalem. And using her body as currency, she bought away on this voyage. Once in Jerusalem, she continued to live in her sinful lifestyle until the feast day of the exaltation of the Holy Cross. Now on this day, she encountered the massive crowds going to the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem for the service. And she went along with the flow to see what was going on. She reached the sepulchre. She walked up towards it as the throngs of crowds pressed in through the doors. She tried to step over the threshold into the church and couldn't. Something was preventing her. At first she thought it was just the push of the crowds, but no matter how hard she tried and how many times she attempted to enter into that church, she found herself pushed back through the hustle and bustle onto the threshold. She couldn't enter the building. She found a quiet corner on the threshold and was touched suddenly by the grace of God and began to cry. She realized it was her own sins that were preventing her from entering this building, from seeing this service. In her tears and in her brokenheartedness, she looked up at an icon of the Theotokos. This woman of immorality looked into the eyes of the most pure woman that had ever lived. And then Mary of Egypt opened up her heart to Mary, the mother of God. And she begged her, please let me into this building. Let me see the cross upon which Christ died, the cross upon which he saved the sinners, even one as I am and be my witness before your son that I am leaving this life behind. I will never again so dishonor my body. I will renounce the entire world and live for him. In this one moment, Mary was overwhelmed with a wave of motherly love. She walked back to the front door, stepped over the threshold and entered the service of the exaltation of the Holy Cross. There she saw the cross and there she felt the true power of the forgiveness and the love of Christ. She left the church again and stood back before the icon of the Theotokos and said, Thank you. Now, what must I do next? Where should I go? How may I best serve? She heard a voice that said to her, if she would cross the Jordan River, she would find glorious rest. And so she did. The next day she crossed over the Jordan River and entered 
the desert. Between that day and the day she met Zosimus, she said she had not seen another human being for 47 years. She spent the first 17 years of that time in the desert wrestling and fighting against the temptations, the lusts and the memories of her old life. And then she said after 17 years, the years matching the years that she had spent in sin, she suddenly felt a bright light and a radiant peace. As she spoke and talked with Zosimus, she was continually quoting scriptures. And so Zosimus asked her, did she have a copy of the scriptures that she had so studied? And she said, no, she had never in her life even heard them read. It seems that purely by getting to know Christ, she had learnt and absorbed these words. Zosimus was astounded at this woman's holiness, at her insight, at her spirituality, at her asceticism. He asked her if there was anything he could do to help her. And she said, yes, could he the next year do something different from what he normally did? Next year, he was not to leave the monastery. She said to wait there until Holy Thursday. And then on Holy Thursday, the day we remember Christ instituting the Eucharist, he would take Holy Communion down to the Jordan River where she would meet him. She also asked him, do not share this story with anyone until after my death. He returned to the monastery and didn't speak of this entire story to anyone. The next year, Great Lent started and all of a sudden he got sick. He wasn't able to leave his bed and spent Great Lent waiting for Holy Thursday. On that day, he took a chalice with the body and blood of Christ, the Holy Eucharist, and he traveled down to the edge of the Jordan River. And he waited, and he waited for Mary to turn up. He waited there and saw her on the other side of the Jordan River, and he didn't know how was she going to get across. There was no boat where she told him to meet. She made the sign of the cross over the waters and walked over the Jordan River to him, and he gave her Holy Communion. A year later, Zosimus returned to the spot where he had first seen Mary of Egypt. When he got there, it was to find her body lying on the ground, her arms folded in the sign of the cross, and her face turned to the east. A message near her body she had written saying she had died the day she had received Holy Communion. Zosimus, in tears, conducted a small funeral service and began with a stick and his bare hands to dig a grave for her there in the desert. All of a sudden, a lion came to him from out of the desert, and Zosimus was terrified. But the lion walked up to where he had started digging the grave and with his own paws began digging with Zosimus. Zosimus placed Mary in the grave, covered it up and finished off his prayers. Zosimus returned to the monastery and told the story to his brothers. And this story has been preserved, kept and recited by the church annually ever since. Zosimus summed up our response to this story in a single prayer. Christ our God, blessed are you for showing to your servant how far I am from perfection. We can never be too arrogant or too self-righteous in the way we fast, in the way we approach holiness, when this one woman has outdone us all. Thank you for joining us for that very powerful story. If you have not heard it before, I can understand that it is a surprising and intense one, but it is one that we love very deeply. And now we are only a very short couple of weeks away from Easter Sunday. If you're interested in the tea that is being drunk today, we are having a Persian tea with oil of bergamot, and it is very peaceful and relaxing. We shall see you soon. Thank you for watching again.